This is Big Podcast. It's Build a Big Podcast, a marketing podcast for podcasters. David Hooper with you from Big Podcast World Headquarters in Nashville, Tennessee. Bigpodcast.com is the site. That is the place to go if you want to grow your podcast, get more people to your podcast, get more people caring about your podcast, make more money with your podcast, spread your message. If it's about podcast growth, I've got it there, bigpodcast.com. I've got a question here. It's actually a combination of feedback and a question. This has to do with a book that I wrote before my most recent book, Big Podcast. It was a book about the music industry. As you know, I've spent a lot of time in the music industry, years and years and years doing music marketing, helping stupid people get famous. (laughs) I wanted to change, and that's why I started working with podcasters. I wanted to spread messages. I wanted to make the world better and do more than just entertainment. But anyway, I did write a book about the music industry, a few of them actually. In the last one, it was called Six Figure Musician. I wanted to leave independent musicians with something that they could go to if they wanted to grow their audiences, spread their music, sell more music. And I got feedback about that book. This actually happens about every week or so. Even though I've not actively promoted that book, I'm really not in that space anymore. But I pulled up Facebook and I got this message. Hi, David. I actually got redirected here from reading your book, The Six Figure Musician. I followed up on Twitter and it took me here. Indispensable book. Absolutely love it. This is the best music book I've ever read, and I've read a few. Thank you so much for your incredible tips and info. Now I went down a rabbit hole, and I'm just curious for the answer. Your book mentions musicmarketing.com. When I type that, it reroutes me to Adam Ivey's YouTube page. Is there any particular reason for this or any correlation? Does the website not actually exist? Thanks for any clarification in the meantime, and keep rocking and doing what you do. Cheers. The story behind that is, I did own musicmarketing.com for a long time, for years and years and years. And that was the site. That was the name of the company, musicmarketing.com. But when I transitioned into podcasting officially as bigpodcast.com, I stopped using that domain. I wasn't interested in promoting myself in two different ways. I find that it's confusing to people. And this is something for you to think about with your podcast. You can't be the real estate expert and also the brain surgeon. You can be one or you can be the other. A lot of the work that I do with podcasters, growing an audience, getting people to events, spreading your message, making money with your message. I was doing the same thing with musicians when I was working at musicmarketing.com. You're both writing things. You're both recording things. You're both spreading a message. A lot of you have live events. You've got merch. In a lot of ways, it's the same business. It's just spoken word rather than music. But still, what I didn't want to do is confuse people. And like I said, what I was trying to get out of was a lot of the major label work that I was doing where I felt like I was just part of the machine. Like, oh man, just put a cowboy hat on this guy, some Wrangler jeans, boots, take it to radio, we're good to go, David. I wasn't interested in doing that kind of work anymore. I was interested in spreading messages that matter, messages that would bring people together, help understanding of other people in the world and help people live better lives. So when Adam Ivey came to me, he said, hey man, you've got this musicmarketing.com. I'm interested in buying that from you. I said, all right, let's work out a deal. So we did. Sold him the domain. It goes to a YouTube channel, apparently. I haven't been to it. (laughs) But this guy wrote me, he's like, yeah, it goes to his YouTube channel. All right, cool. So Adam's off on it. And I'm assuming that he's doing a good job and doing that kind of work. It wasn't helping anybody for me to have it. I've still got the book and probably honestly in the next edition of that book, if I ever decide to do another edition, I will take that off. It won't be musicmarketing.com presents. It'll be whatever David Hooper presents or nothing presents. I haven't gotten around to that because the books that I've been working on, they are about podcasting. My first one was just called Big Podcast. That one's at bigpodcast.com slash book. If you're interested, I've got a paperback, hardback, audiobook. You can feel rich. It's like you hiring me to personally read it to you. All of those available at bigpodcast.com slash book. The audiobook version, that's actually free with Audible trial. So go to bigpodcast.com slash book if you are interested in that. This is why I'm mentioning this letter to you. Sometimes we get involved with something And maybe it's a podcast for you, or it's your business direction. Maybe it's a marriage. I don't know. We get involved in various things in our lives that 
at one time they worked out and eventually they don't work out. There's a day when it stops being great to you and it stops being good and eventually stops being tolerable and you decide to move forward. And the story with me and musicmarketing.com was really interesting because after 20 something years in the music industry, I was ready to leave. I was done. But at the same time, it was my identity. And I've got this great domain name. And I've got this book that gets these messages every week or so still, even though I'm not promoting it. And I thought, well, you know, I'm still getting a lot of attention for this book. And I've still got this identity. And I'm in Nashville. It's okay. It's okay. And I recently had something happen with the sister podcast to this podcast, Red Podcast. That had been going on for seven and a half years. At the end of the year, I decided to shut it down. I was done. I couldn't split my time between this and the books and the other work that I'm doing and Red Podcast. It was taking away from the real message that I wanted to spread. It wasn't a bad message, but it was a little bit less focused than the message that you will hear on this podcast. I wanted to go full in on podcasting. That was my decision. Again, the music marketing work and Red Podcast work, arguably, that's the same work. It's helping people spread messages. That is what I do. Sometimes you're a musician at a live show and you're spreading a message that way. Sometimes you're an expert and you want to spread a message via a book or your own live event. I wanted to double down on podcasting. I've been doing radio since the 90s. I've been doing podcasting since 2005. I think we have a tendency as we go on about our lives to pick up things along the way, pick up skills, and pick up work and pick up opportunities that are pretty good, but not what I would call a hell yes. It's almost like picking up weight. If you gain one or two pounds, that's not a big deal, right? But if you gain one or two pounds every year, 10 years, you got 20 or 30 pounds on you that you didn't want. And it's easy to pick these things up little by little by little by little, where you can do a little bit like maybe an extra side project here or there, a one-off thing, maybe even a full-on book, something as big as that. But when it comes to something really big, like the machine that I have with Red Podcast and the business behind that, certainly musicmarketing.com and the business behind that, I couldn't do all of it. And I say this to say that you, as a podcaster, have to watch out for this. I see so many podcasters, they start one podcast and then they start another. And somebody comes up to them and says, hey, I got an idea for a podcast. We could co-host it together. And you start stacking things on top of each other. And it gets to the point where those little bitty things that you're stacking on top of each other, or that you've had going on in the past and that you're only tolerating now, that aren't hell yeses for you now, it gets to the point where those are keeping you from what you really want to do now. So I say this just to say, look at it. You might want to audit yourself. Write down all the podcasts that you're doing. Write down the ways that you're getting new clients in. Write down all the things that you're doing for money. And ask yourself, Do I really like all of these things? Do they give me energy? Is this something that I can see myself doing in three to five years? Am I only here for the money? Am I only here because I'm tolerating this? Just something to think about. It's not easy to make the jump. As I mentioned, that music marketing change was something very difficult for me. I didn't think that it would be that difficult because I was ready to go. But there was a part of me that I was known. And there was a part of me when I would go into a music conference, people would know who I am. I didn't have to have a business card. I was good. If I needed a speaking engagement, I could get it. I didn't have that going into podcasting. I was in my silo for a long time with podcasting, probably the first nine years of podcasting. I knew Dave Jackson because Dave Jackson from School of Podcasting, he got me into the podcasting business, not because of School of Podcasting, but because of his music business podcast that he had before. So I knew him, but I really didn't know other podcasters. I'm going to end this episode with this. For some reason, we think we have to be everywhere. It's heard people talking about, should I simulcast? Should I stream on YouTube and Facebook? You don't have to stream on either one of them. (laughs) Just do what you do and do it well. And maybe that's writing books. Some people don't need podcasts. Maybe it's podcasts. Some people don't need books. You don't have to do everything. I don't particularly like YouTube. I don't like TikTok. Don't even have TikTok on my phone. But so many people, they play in traffic 
because there's a bunch of people there. Like, oh man, I could pick up a thousand people, 10,000 people, 20,000 people. Could you? Or are they those people on your mailing list that are never opening the emails that you send? Are they those people who are subscribed to your podcast that never listen to your podcast? You don't have to go for the numbers. You want to go for the audience that wants you, that's going to feel a connection to what you do, that's going to be helped by what you do. And you need to go to them with your best work. Being everywhere is not necessarily the way to do it. Sometimes you just need to simplify. So I would encourage you to simplify your message, simplify what you do, simplify the way that you get clients, focus on what's working. Don't do things that are not moving the needle. If you like a certain type of podcast, focus on that. If you want to do solo, do solo. If you want to do guests, do guests. You don't necessarily have to do either one, although doing either one does give you more options, but you do you. I talked about this in my book, that you want your forehand to be so good, they forget that you don't have a backhand. So consider that as you move forward this year with your podcast. If you need help, bigpodcast.com. I've got the newsletter there. You can subscribe to this podcast there. I make it really easy. One click is all it takes iPhone, Android, RSS, whatever you need. One click will get you subscribed. You will never miss an episode. You get the newsletter every week. You get all the marketing tips that you can use. Too many maybe, because you simply don't have enough time for every single thing that's being thrown at you. That's what I try to do. I try to cut through the noise. I try to help you do that with your message. And I'm going to do that with my message, getting it to you and showing you what works and what you should focus on. Bigpodcast.com has all that. Go there, subscribe to the podcast, get the newsletter, and I will see you on the next episode.